Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. I had a look, it's uh, apparently difficult. Um, oh, I was having <laughs> I was having some problems working out how to do a few things. It it, it turned out to be a lot easier than I, I, I thought it was when I, I was I was uh, experimenting with it. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how it reads when I post things like that in uh, in in the Slack channel. I, I hope people don't think I'm kind of making things out that they're harder than they are. Um, but yeah, there was a there was a few things. That, like, I was just trying to do things too fast and um, in in time for the meeting and that. But uh, yeah, there's there's bits of this chapter that um, that I didn't get to include in the um in the talk because i, I just, to be honest i just couldn't i i, I built an, a, an app and tried to add various tests to it and things like that um and i couldn't work out how to add something that would test the kind of browser driven um things um but uh I don't think it really matters that much because, um, you know, the book's still there for everyone. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll certainly take through the kind of test server stuff and stuff like that. Anyway. What have I got here? I just I had a look at the chapter and I'm trying to understand a few things just to, um, to be able to follow you. But <laughs> at first look very um, like stranger things. So uh, I decided to wait for you for your explanations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, good. It's been quite interesting to uh, to to work through this kind of properly though, because there wasn't really, to my knowledge, there, there aren't any exercises in the chapter. But there was quite a lot of content, and I, I you know, I, I'd read through the chapter a couple of times, and it was only when I kind of turned off the book, you know, like closed the book and tried to implement what it was talking about for one of my own apps that I realised that. You know, what? Well, sorry, I'm saying one of my own apps, one of the apps in the book that I've been rewriting to make it testable and things like that. Um, that it, yeah, my some of my misunderstandings and things uh, came to the front. But uh, anyway, right. Yes, no, there's no exercises in this chapter. Um, Right. Um, okay, so we'll wait for some people, hopefully. Uh, yeah. How are you doing anyway? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, uh, quite busy. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. Um, yes, I'm looking at different things. So, and then trying to uh put everything together so to to have a, a visualization of all the things that i've learned mm. uh, yeah i've seen your posts year. on twitter you're doing a lot of kind of visualization type stuff aren't you ah uh, uh, yes that's uh that's tidy tuesday <laughs> oh, is already, it? oh of course i'm, <laughs> I'm already late for for this <laughs> week <laughs> But uh, now that's very good, and that's lots of data to uh, to use to to go through to see, and it, it's always different. So you find always something new to to learn. 
so it's very good for for practicing visualizations uh, yeah mm. not only that because um, i'm trying to uh, set up things more properly about uh, distributions and um, statistics uh, yeah, test yeah yeah uh, in, in a app <laughs> using a app so um I, i've been uh, uh, trying to understand this test uh thing <laughs> but uh, you know you need to read the chapter through a, at least a couple of times mm, yeah and then, yeah, yeah and test all the the functions and see all the things and look for on the internet if you uh, need more uh, information and everything so I would, i'm just started watching the the video that you have shared <laughs> the thing on the testing thing it's quite a job <laughs> so I can't find the Zoom meeting. I'm sorry. I, I know I'm all, I know I'm being projected out to the world, but I can't find where the uh, ah, there's the participants, right? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, right, should I um I'll shut that and we'll reduce the size of that. Is this all readable, everyone? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay. Um, right. Uh, well, then I might start um, if that's okay. Um, okay. So, uh, thanks everyone for coming again. Um, we've got another couple of weeks of the the uh, books content to uh, cover so next week is on um security issues related to to shiny um and the following weeks about performance issues things like caching and kind of optimizing code and, and things like that um uh anyone if anyone's interested in presenting either of those please please step forward because i mean the security one I, I i don't know a great deal about the security chapter i don't know a great deal about i've kind of glanced through it and it seems quite a short chapter but there's probably quite a bit of scope to um frame some discussions around it the um performance one's got quite a bit of content in it um but it gets it allows you to work with to tools like profmis and things which are quite cool as well um but yes today is about testing um and i i i i developed quite a few packages and i am quite relatively fluent with test that um but i hadn't actually used the test server um function that specifically for the shiny and um i hadn't used the shiny driver thing before although i've used um um, um, um selenium to to run browser driven tests for um django before but never used the equivalent for shiny um there is a final section of the the chapter that i i won't get to talk about because i really don't um uh so hold on um, the final section is on testing the visual output of an app so this allows you to um start your app running put it into a particular state and then take a kind of snapshot of the of, of what the app looks like 
Um, and then as you change a wrap over the weeks and months subsequently, you can do the you can test that the app looks the same as it did when you um, took a snapshot of it originally. That seems to be the general gist of it. I've posted a link to a webinar um, that I think it's Winston Chang uh, gave um, that relates to that kind of visual testing of, of shiny apps um, because I, I, I simply won't get to, to, to do it today. Um, uh, but yeah, I've posted that into Slack. Um, so let's talk about testing. Um, so, um, firstly, the so the learning outcomes for this chapter were basically to cover things like the purpose of testing, the um, um, the different types of tests that you can apply to a shiny app. Um, what sort of trade-offs there are in testing at one level versus another. So for example, in terms of the speed and the fragility and the, the, uh, the depth to which you can test things at different levels. Um, and I've put in here to reiterate that Shiny is different from most R code in that it runs in a reactive uh, you know the 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 server function at least runs in a kind of reactive context which is somewhat it, it is foreign to how you, you might think when developing our code normally and as a consequence of that um the apps you develop should be tested in a reactive context um, Okay, so, right, so the purpose of testing. Um, um, there, are, there are a few different kind of schools of thought on, on how and when to test and things, but ultimately testing exists to, um, to provide you a bit of a safety net around your app. So if you're, if you've got tests in place and you update your R version or you update some packages that are used within your app, you can use those tests to provide some kind of um, verification that your app still works as it should. Similarly, um, if you start to add new features to an existing app, um, you might have to modify some code that pre-exists and things to get those new features in place. What you don't want is for your modifications to existing source code to break features that pre-existed in, in that app. Um, and similarly, there are things like, you know, when, when bugs arise within your code, um, you can turn those bugs into tests so that you can be fairly certain that that bug won't arise again because every time you run your tests, um, there'll be a test for that bug. Um, and also, um, you know, maybe I'm not, but I imagine there's other people who have kind of mission critical things or, uh, that they're running on a day-to-day -day basis or that they're developing on a kind of... If you... <laughs> um, and basically, <laughs> so I put this in that you can go on holiday if you've got tests because you can hand off your app to one of your colleagues who can continue to work on it, safe in the knowledge that they haven't broke some of your own uh, code when they're working on it and things. Right, anyway, let's move on. So, um, yes, there's a few um, ways of testing uh, that related to this chapter, it probably principally um, I'm going to talk about test-driven development, which is where um, you write tests for, it's, supposing you're writing a new, you want to introduce a new feature into an app. Um, test-driven development is a way of 
where you write tests prior to the code that um, you'd need to write to pass those tests rather than the, maybe the more natural way to do this sort of stuff is to write your code and then write some tests that check, say, the function that you've just written. And the problem with that approach, in my experience at least, is that the tests just don't get written. <laughs> so you write loads of code, think, oh, that seems to be working fine. Actually, I think I might start working on something else now rather than working on the tests that very fine. And the great thing about test-driven development is that if you write the tests first and then implement stuff, the tests exist. Um, and all too often, you will find yourself working on an app or a package or something like that for which there are no tests. And um, anyway. Let's move on. We can discuss all this stuff later if you want to talk about whether you ought to test, um, whether your tests ought to test things like the framework. So um, if you're writing a test for a function and your function, all it does is call out to dply r to run some code, are you really testing your own function or are you really testing dply r? And is it, is it necessarily? worth you testing that small function that just calls a, a is just like a kind of helper function wrapped around an existing package anyway so for this yes yes, yes oh, i have a question can you go back yeah 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 of course um so i've heard of test driven development um but can you talk a, a little bit about behavior driven development and then the tcr oh like, uh, yeah 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 of course what um, do they so, entail well uh behavior driven development I'm not a, I'm not an expert on, but seems to be at a, a more kind of um, a, a grander level than test driven development. So uh, with behavior driven development, you typically work from uh, like a user story. So it would be a kind of description of how the uh, 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 a kind of hypothetical user might use your app mm. and say you could encode that as a a, a kind of test script that's you know the user logs in clicks this button sees this graph pop up blah 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 and then you from that test script you kind of iterate uh to implement each of the um features that are, are kind of described in there oh, I see. um TC, uh, test uh, test commit revert is a slightly it's um a lot of the time if if you're working with um code that has relatively few tests but um what this is it's a way of kind of writing tests to um writing tests for an existing code base and it requires that you understand the when you're writing a, a given test it requires that you understand the code base sufficiently well that the test that you write will automatically pass and if that test passes so suppose supposing you spend you know a few 20 minutes trying to understand what some big function does and then you write a test to um, test that um, encapsulates your new knowledge of that function. Mm -hmm. If that test passes, then you've understood that function well enough for that test to enter the code base. So your test passes, so you can commit that new test code. If the test that you've written fails, then you haven't quite understood the function well enough. And the code that you've written, all that new test code that you've written should just be thrown out and you should start again. So what happens in this kind of um, framework is that you write tests. If they pass, you commit them. If they fail, you revert back to your original state and you try and write in smaller steps that are more easily 
you know, easily committed. That's a way of adding new tests to a thing. You can do it in a, a, a refactoring way as well, whereby, you know, if you're changing code and you've already got a good test uh, code, a test, what do they call it, harness, mm -hmm. um, any kind of changes that you introduced should those tests should still pass after any changes that you introduce and if they don't you should throw out the code and try and do smaller changes that are a bit more conservative um i i've got a i think there's a link to a description of this at the end of the the, the my notes um, cool. thank you but yeah so they're just different kind of ap approaches to um a, a kind of test focused way of developing code. Um, so out, outlined in the chapter um, are four different levels at which you can test your Shiny apps. So there are uh, the kind of non-reactive functions, which are the things that you would typically write in a, an R, um, uh, you know, an R package and, and things like that. And I'll take you through an example of, uh, of a non-reactive function. Um, then there are um, uh, tests that the server function for your app works appropriately when, so on setting the input values for your app, do the reactive values and the output values update appropriately? Then there are um, a, a, a kind of higher level. These are browser-driven tests um, where it's equivalent to how you'd interact with the app by, you know, clicking here, changing that, um, do the tables update, does the graph update, um, these kind of tests. Um, these are slightly different from ones where you're just testing the server function of your app. So for a browser-driven one, um, you can test things like the user interface and, and whatnot. The visual output of the app is, is the, the, the shiny test approach that I was talking about at the start, which I'm afraid I'm not particularly fluent with. And I have provided a, a kind of link to a webinar in the Slack channel. Um, what these different levels separate is kind of the, the reactive, the shiny type behavior from the stateless behavior. So the um, server reactive functionality from the non-reactive um, kind of pure behavior of a, a, a more typical function. Um, also separates um, behavior of an app that is dependent on interacting with the UI, the, the user interface and, 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 and behavior that's independent of that. And it also separates um, the values that are stored within your app that are stored on the server side, say, from how those values are rendered and kind of visualized in the app. Um, so we'll go through these. So in, in this, I've, I've written an example project basically by taking um, uh, chapter four there's a case study um, of emergency room injuries um, and I wrote that out on um, in in you know I, I, I added I put that app onto github and gradually modified it and modified it to get um, get it into a package structure, get it from that into a package that passes the R command check workflow. Those two things are kind of irrelevant for today, but package structure is kind of useful for testing. And then reordered, re restructured the code so that I can get tests to work uh, for, for non-reactive functions and then tests for reactivity of the of the server function and then <clears throat> introduced a module into the code so that I could test that using the um, test server functionality. Um, so this is 
if I open that in here, I think I might. So if we look at, where are we? Um, if I look at tags, this is an app that passes our command check. So the only thing that's really defined in this app at the moment is a single function that can be called to run this app. And this is what the app looks like. So it's um, you select a particular product. These are things that uh, people have been injured by or while using. Um, and then these are kind of uh, summary statistics of how many people, how many, sorry, how many in how many emergency room incidents have there been where a person has been, you know, uh, is there anything that isn't hideous? Um, hurt where they've hurt their upper leg as a result of um, something to do with a, a, a table. Um, and then there's a graph showing differences in the number of injuries according to the age of the person presenting in the ER and according to whether they're male or female. Right, so the code for that is in here. And the actual, um, I make no functional changes to that app while I'm working on this, but there's a series of kind of restructurings of the code that make it easier to test and things like that. So um, if we look at the server function, I think I pulled out the relevant bit in here. Um, so, oh God, yes. So we're going to be using test that. Um, the typical structure of, you know, the, the, the infrastructure you require to run test that against a package is basically that you need a tests subdirectory with a script that will run all the tests relevant to that uh, package. All the test uh, files for the package are of this form. And there are little helpers you can use with it provided by DevTools to, to add tests to a package. Um, so for example, you can make a new test file using use this, use test. I said dev tools and now I'm talking about use this. Use test and then provide a, 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 a kind of file name. And similarly, you can create a new um, R script using use R. Uh, da, da, da. So Hadley's recommended workflow is that you create test files using use this. You write the code and the tests, then you run a test file on that the, the specific file that you are working on, the specific test file that you are working on. Any bugs that arise during your development work should be turned into new tests. And then at the end of that, you should run uh, test coverage to check that the um, uh, package coverage is, is, is improved and run um, this, which runs tests against, it run, runs every single test file for that package. Um, so we'll be using that here. Right, so before modification, this is some changes I've had to do to test a non-reactive function related to the app. So, um, so the app at the moment, we start off with some data. We define the user interface for the app. And then there's this server function here. Um, there's three um, output values here that are all defined using a similar kind of um, similar code. So you take, this is a data frame, it's a reactive wrapped around the data frame. From that, you count up, say, the number of 
um, the number of ER incidents that are concussions that are caused by table wear, weighted by the number of people in the population that are of you know that age and that sex. Um, this code is repeated three times. So, so what we've done is pull it out into a separate function. Well, what, what we're going to do is pull it out into a separate function. Um, to do that, we add a function script using use r, and I've just called the function count by weight, uh, and also add a test script for that function using this um, command. Doing that in an app that has no tests yet uh, adds a all that test that infrastructure that that, that we described before, um, and you can add a few tests. Da, 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 then run the um, DevTools test and DevTools uh, test file and, and whatever. So a tip the structure of a typical test looks like this: you. Um, you describe what the test is supposed to do. You um, arrange a bunch of data to use within your test. You perform some action on that data. And then you check whether your output from running that action is consistent with what you expected to see. So. For this, we start off with uh, a data, a, well, a table um, that has five A's, three B's, and nine C's in it. We want to count up each of those. So the um, the data frame that results should have, you know, there were five A's in the input data, there were three B's in the input data. Um, weighted by this. Now, the weights are constant, so it, that, that should have no influence. But what we're testing here is that the, um, the count column in the output, in the data frame output by that, should be sorted. Um, so you should see C first, and then A, and then B. So that's the kind of ty typical structure of a test that you'd use and test that. Um, then do I, oh, sorry, hold on, I'll show you the, I'll show you the code now. Um, right, okay, so if we go to not tags point four, then look at the tests see that I've added that test script. And da, 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 da. so there's a few different tests I've added here. The output data frame should have um, whatever column the user input selected and a count column um, that the returned value should be sorted and things like that. OK, um, then the function that we implemented is basically the same as we saw in the original app. Um, so it's, you take some data frame, you count up according to one column weighted by another, and then you sort the output. That's like, this is a kind of, it. whether it's worth testing a, f a function that just calls one statement, I don't know, to be honest. Um, I, 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 it's probably, unnecessary in this setting, but it's just a kind of illustrative um, um, app this. So I'm, I'm not going to get philosophical on, on, on those kind of things. Um, this function now passes all the tests that I um, requested that it passes. Um, so we can now go on from so that's a, a test for a kind of pure function. X here isn't reactive. It's a, a just a, a plain old R uh, data frame or tibble or, or whatever. Um, 
Okay, so we can now go on and test something more relevant to shiny specific development. Okay, now this required me to make a, a, quite a bit of restructuring to the app before I could even get these tests to work. Um, well, I don't know, I could probably have done less. Um, but so the, so the tests of, of reactive behavior are, are of a similar form. So you would have, you would set up the data upon which you want to test your app or set your app up into the, an appropriate state in which you test it, perform some action on that app and then test that whatever action you've just done has resulted in uh, a, in in what you expected to see um, but because the server function for an app has to run in a reactive context you have to provide a kind of mocked server within which that um, function can run um, but so this is an app right so this is um, an app that's based on quite a big data set and um, I didn't want to have to write tests that depend on the specific data set that's presented to the user because you know so this the data that's used here at the moment is a single year's worth of data related to ER injuries. Supposing in a few months time, I think, oh, hold on, why am I presenting 2017's data? Why don't I present 2020's data? Because it's, you know, more relevant now. Um, changing the data upon uh, that the app is based on may change the tests you know the it may mean that the tests that i've written against that 2017 data are no longer valid so when i'm writing tests for a server function i want to be able to inject in test data that i know won't change as the app kind of develops over time so um so the first structural change i had to do uh, was to pull out the server function from inside that ER app function that I showed you earlier on. And then what I want to do is provide a way to pass the pass data sets into that server function that I've just extracted out. And for this app, those data sets might be the real data as, as used here or some test data that's appropriate to whatever I'm testing. So that wasn't so simple. Um, and the reason it wasn't so simple was that I was trying to make it more complicated than it needed to be. So, um, 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 so right, the restructuring occurs like this. So we've now got the app function here, which returns a, shi a, you know, a runnable shiny app object. The user interface I also pulled out into a separate function. So that's just pulled in here. And the server function that's used is made it using a kind of nested function pattern. Um, so what I do is I pass in the injuries products, the population data that underpin this app so that they're then visible when you create the server function that's run by Shiny. Um, now, this was like the third iteration of how, how I thought I'd be able to get this data in. And we can talk about all my failed attempts later if you want. Um, um, but basically, this is how, I'd, how I've set it up so that you're making a server function a, appropriate to running this app based on data that's passed in. Um, so if I pull out the 
um, reactive update thing. So the, the full app now looks like this. So there's the, all the kind of boilerplate for the user interface. This defines the selected data frame. Then there's, you construct those tables that are presented here. Then the, towards the bottom, you make a kind of summary data frame and then plot a, make this plot from that summary data frame. And what, uh, please ignore this. This is me debugging something. Um, right, so, so what I wanted to do what I wanted to do was write the simplest test that would illustrate server side reactivity that I could um, for illustrative purposes. All right. Um, so, what I'm going to test is that this selected data frame, so all that does is it takes the user inputs, which of an, a, more, you know, a, a variety of different products they want to summarize the injury data for. Um, and what I, so each time you click on there, this table, so this table selected is updated. Um, so what I want to do is test um, in a kind of reactive context, if I change the product code that's passed in, does the selected, the data frame that's called selected get updated appropriately? So I've written a test that looks like test ER server. So here we're defining a bunch of test data then we define an appropriate server function to be used in the test. So we're passing in that test data into the function that makes the server function. And then with that server function, we can run it in against this um, kind of mock server that Shiny provides for running tests. Um, so if I go back to me, notes. Um, okay, so test server. What this does is it sets up a reactive context within which you can test your server logic. Um, if you're using it to test, you can you can use it to test both the server function for your app or the, the kind of server logic for a module. And when you're testing a module, you might set arguments that that module depends upon as well. That's not something you can do with um, the server from a Shiny app. And if you try to, which I did, um, Shiny will complain that you shouldn't be providing arguments to a Shiny app's server function. Um, there are a variety of little methods that are quite useful when you're working with this test server thing. So you can set the inputs to appropriate values. So I might, so in the test that I write, I set the input product code to an appropriate uh, code. This method, um, this method's required when you're testing modules because setting the input values doesn't necessarily update the reactive graph when you're testing against the module. So it's a kind of gotcha. Um, and this can be used, if you're testing a module, this method can be used to get whatever returned value comes back out of that module. And also uh, a, a kind of, which may be critical to your, your tests. Um, although your apps run in real time, uh, well, sorry, your tests run in real time, but um, there may be, um, logic within them that is time dependent and you can advance the time by clicking this. There's an example of why you would use this in a test. So this is a, a typical reactivity test. I've just shown you the, the, the boilerplate for it. So you define your test data, you define your server function, 
you pass that server function into a kind of um, the into the the running server. Then you might set some inputs here with just setting the uh, product code equivalently to changing this user interface, checking that the um, sorry the selected data frame upon which these tables are based updates, and then we set the inputs to set that product code to another thing and check that the selected data matches something else. It's probably not the best illustration of how to write a test, but um, basically this product code isn't present in the injuries data set. So the selected data should be an empty data frame there. Um, this product code is in the test data that I passed in. So, oh, it's not illustrated there. Um, and this is just a way to pull out the um, data for just this product code. Um, so if we go back to a few, um, okay, so that's that. Um, yeah, so, so this being a test that um, runnable test, we can um, check that we can check that that runs okay using control shift T or, or using dev tools check or using dev tools test. Um, so that's how you'd test the reactivity of a server function. The, the other example that I'm gonna talk about is how you test what, what differences there are between testing a the server for a shiny app versus the server for a module. Um, so uh, yeah, so the, the code is very similar. So you still use that test server, you still have to pass in a server function. Um, but here you can pass in arguments as well. Um, so here's some code where um, so this is the code that displays these three tables that you know formats and displays that stuff. This is the code that constructs the reactive elements and you know assigns them to the output. Um, so what we're going to do is take this UI code and this server code, transfer them over into a module, and then test the server code for that module. Um, so in order to do that, what I did was um, I introduced a module. I can show you the um, hang on. tags 0.6. Um, I'll show you the source code first. So in the app, um, we no longer have um, now you're just calling a, a module um, UI function here and you're calling a module server function within the server code for the app passing in some passing in an argument if we look at how that module is constructed it shouldn't be a particular surprise after the the modules chapter we did two or three weeks ago so the ui we put a, we namespace based on the id that's passed in then um construct a row that contains the diagnosis, the body part, and the location, uh, a column for each, and kind of evenly split across a 12-column um, fluid row. Then we define a, um, a server function that constructs the data 
for these tables. Now I've had to make a slight diff slight change here. Um, I don't know whether I mentioned why I've done that here. Uh, maybe not. Um, if I go into the readme for this, I've put some description of why I made these changes. Um, so, um, right, so to construct the diagnosis table, say, um, we use this code based on a, a, a table called selected, which is reactive. And in its initial form, we would wrap that with render table to make something that can be passed into the output. Um, I made a slight mistake to begin with, but then fix that. So what we're doing, um, what, sorry, what am, I, what am I trying to emphasize here? I'm trying to emphasize that um, there's two ways of testing this data here. I can either test that the code for the, 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 the string that's stored in output dollar, the diagnosis thing, matches some other kind of rendered HTML for a, for a table. Or in, a, in, in this test, I can, uh, or I can test that the values computed here, uh, that that is an appropriate kind of data frame. So um, for sanity's sake, comparing a data frame against a data frame is much easier than comparing the HTML rendered version of a data frame against the HTML re rendered version of a data frame. So I wrote the test such that um, 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 um. Yeah, sorry, I wrote the module code such that that data frame is created first, and then a rendered version of that data frame is sent to the outputs of the app, of the module. And I did this so that I could compare the data frame stored in this to uh, a kind of expected value in, in a module test. So if I go back into the code, tend to, um, oh, 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 tests, the tests uh, look like this. So again, um, da, 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 you set up some data, you set up your expected outputs, you wrap everything in a test that, um, statement, describe what the test is supposed to do. It's probably not the best description. Any reactives or any values that you need to pass in to the server function um, can be passed in using this args uh, list that test server provides. So here we're passing in the server function for that count tables module. And we're checking that the data frame that's constructed is equal to what we expected to see. So for example, here, um, your, the count of the number of people with a diagnosis of A is 20, and the count of the number of people with diagnosis of C is 15, so our expected count on summarizing by diagnosis is 20 and 15. Um, so the test structure looks almost the same as for the for testing the, ser the server function for an app. And really, like the test that structure looks almost identical to how you'd do that, do tests for a, a pure function like the um, um, the function that, that does the counting on, on these tables that I showed you at the very start of the, the uh, meetup. Um, yeah, so um, aside from this test server thing and uh, relative to the, the, the 
whole app tests the presence of this args argument. Um, so that's how you would test um, reactivity in the server function for a module. Yeah, so this is a kind of typical module reactivity. You set up your input data, you set up your expected uh, outcome, you pass in the uh, data to yeah. within this test server. Um, because these reactives will cause you problems if you don't work within a test server. Um, anyway, so that's server side logic. Um, there is also a small section in the chapter about testing the user interface side, the JavaScript and, and things like that, that, um, that, that is also wrapped up in Shiny. Um, so, um, and the reason for having a separate section is that the, the JavaScript simply doesn't work within that test server function. Um, so anything that you might even use from the server side that depends on JavaScript, like insert user interface, um, uh, won't work as expected within that test server function either. Uh, in order to do that, you need some form of browser. Now you don't, you don't actually need the visual display of a browser to do these kind of tests. You can do uh, tests in a headless way where you, um, where a kind of, a server is generated that runs your app and you encode in source code, you, in the, the test code, which buttons are clicked and things like that. Um, and the tool with which you can do that is called Shiny Test, although in the past I've done this kind of thing with Selenium and, and um, Colin Fay, who spoke to us a couple of months ago, mentioned a tool called Puppeteer that he uses for the same kind of things. Um, the issue with these kind of tests where you're depending on the user interface and a, a complete running server is that they're slow relative to other tests. Um, the code is a little bit more flaky because, you know, if you say if you extract another bit of code into a module, the IDs associated with the original HTML elements will now have the module's ID as a prefix. So you might have to find different, you, know, you might have to update the names of the elements that you pluck out of the HTML to, to click when you're, when you're working with these kind of tests. And also you can't see any of the internal state uh, of the Shiny app. So you can't poll what the server function is storing for a particular value when running these things. There is an example of how to use this in Mastering Shiny, but I didn't quite get it to work for the app that I was working on. What I was trying to do was write a, a, a kind of JavaScript type test that would um, start with the initial app, select rugs, say, check that the number of fractures is consistent with what I saw as you know, when, when originally working or pass in some test data where I'm quite explicit about what the number of fractures is due to injuries involving rugs. Um, but I just couldn't get it to work. I, I, was, try, I was trying to, you know, uh, I don't know whether this is worth doing right now, but I was trying to pull out this item change its data value and things like that. And maybe it's just a complete misunderstanding on my part as to how <clears throat> clicking on these things transfers information back to the Shiny, to the server side of Shiny and whatnot. I just couldn't get it to work. But, you know, that's an exercise for everyone to uh, to work out how to do any front end testing on any shiny app. Um, 
I'll, I'm sure I'll work it out before the end of the week and I'll, I'll but may well work it out within an hour of finishing this talk, but I couldn't get it done in time for the, uh, the, the talk today. Um, so yeah, that's another um, level at which you can test Shiny. Um, I didn't include any content on um, testing the visuals of um, a Shiny app, but, but there's a, a short section in here and there's some good material at the R Studio um, tutorials webpage. Um, I've included, oh, sorry, these are, these are notes for me, not for you, sorry. These are things that I learned about that test that can do that I didn't know about until I read this chapter. Um, anyway, um, 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 that's what happens when you copy your own notes into the, um, <laughs> the shiny book club notes without editing them properly. Um, right. Um, so yeah, there was another thing mentioned in the chapter about adding shortcuts and how it improves your workflow and things like that. And for the life of me, I couldn't work out how to do it. If anyone knows it, um, an, a pre-existing add-in or how to construct an add-in that would um, run test file when you click control T and things like that within our studio, I would love to know because I use our studio day to day, all day long. And there are so many like neat little things that I just don't know and didn't even know that I didn't know until someone does them in a kind of live coding context and things like that. Um, other interesting things, I've added some links. Um, Tiny test is a kind of alternative to test that, which is has fewer dependencies and things like that. I'm not going to advertise Tiny test, but it does have um, a nice little section in one of its vignettes on um, good practice for writing tests. Um, and one of the things that I got from that was just to test the kind of the biggest um, the what what you would export if you were making a package rather than the kind of internal helper functions. Um, there's um, this is a nice kind of illustration of effectively behavior driven design where you'd write a big kind of user story and then kind of iterate through that user story for each thing that a user should be able to do start doing kind of test-driven development to implement just that feature and then go back and work on the next step that they should be able to do in that user story. So this is what people normally think of when thinking of test-driven development. But what you end up with if you work that way is lots of tests that test the functionality of your code but don't necessarily test um, that that code, you know, when a user works with it, they can do what they want to do. Um, I don't know whether that is a particularly good, a particularly coherent explanation of that, but um, our packages has a good chapter on test that. And there's, um, oh yeah, there's a, a few different articles on testing Shiny uh, elsewhere. Um, great, thanks. Uh, does anyone have any questions or anything um let me show the hold on i'll pull our studio over here so this is um if i uh which one am i in by the end i had done reactive module Um, and if I do control F2 to get up here and run these tests. So now this is um, at the end of the talk, I have these three test scripts. And when I run test, when I test the whole package within our studio, um, I get passes on every one of the tests that I've written. And I've got, now I've got a module, um, some internal functions, 
and a server function that can be tested in other settings. Key. Uh, sorry, I've not got the chat up showing. Is there anything posted in there? Nope, no chat. <laughs> Hello? Okay, um, I may have some questions about, like, can you go back to the R Studio and... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, so this is, um, how did you run the test, basically? Oh, right, okay, so to, to run tests, if you've, if you're in this, this is the build, um, panel this only comes up as far as i'm aware this only comes up when you're when you're working in a package structure there is a way to run tests if you're not in a package but um so within here in this build panel there are a variety of different uh things that you can do so this loads all the functions within your um package this uh, builds the binaries and things. You can use Control Shift T, or presumably if you're on a Mac, Command Shift T to test the package. And what that does is it runs every one of the test scripts in your test that folder. Um, check package runs a variety of other tests, so it it, it checks that you've um it it, <laughs> it can be the bane of your life if you don't use it often to be honest um so it checks that you're using functions that are imported and you've got the appropriate packages defined in your description and things like that and also runs all of your tests um document so if i think there is a there's a little bit of roxygen documentation it's utterly useless but um if i run control shift d that will update the um help pages and the help pages are stored in this page of the app um but yeah so to run the test you just do control shift t the okay. alternative is to do um oh, sorry I can't do anything because the app's running. Uh, but what what if I'm not in a package? Um, if you're not in a package, um, you oh, uh, um, if you're not in a package, you can you. I mean, you can just have test scripts that you run. So, for example, I can run um, if I. I don't think any of them depend on file paths or anything like that. But if I do tests, I can run a test script uh, from the console. You have to be a bit wary of doing this, though, because um, you need to have sourced all your um, functions and things like that before running this if you're not in a package. Whereas if you have put a package structure around your code, you can do, do that to load up all your functions and data and things like that, and then do that to run all the tests. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. If I hold on, if I check out, if I pull this out, so um, let's have a see. If I do test this, I, I'm just going to illustrate that the. Um, the browser driven tests are a little bit slower. This test will fail, but you know, those have already run the 
the test that I showed you in the um, um, uh, talk, uh, I wrote another test. Um, JS product. Oh, the, re the reason it passes is because I've commented out all the actual difficulties. Um, um, yes, uh, but as as you probably saw, that took a few seconds, six and a half seconds to run that test, whereas um, but, but the ER server test took half a second to run. So the you know for an equivalent length test you know, in terms of source code, it's like 10 times long to run a um, full browser driven test than a server test. So, you know, if at all possible, try to test at the server level or at the function level than um, at the browser level. Uh, anyway, yes, thanks. I found it quite an interesting chapter to, to read because, um, I mean, I quite, interested in testing anyway but um yes uh there was quite quite a bit of um stuff to to take in and i still don't really understand this uh, why this shiny driver thing doesn't work for me anyway thanks everyone thanks, thank you <laughs> i'll see you all next week then see ya. thank you bye <laughs> see ya.